Welcome back to the podcast. You know, guys, we're going to talk about uh, really a, a, a fun topic. And today's guest is the whisperer, right? When, when, uh, when, when entrepreneurs are looking for the way to expand their business, that secret uh, entity, that secret person is going to really whisper in their ear how to get customers, how to go out to the marketplace, how to find uh, the right customers and clients for them and their business. They call Mark Dunnigan. He's the entrepreneurial whisperer. He's the C, uh, CMO for for companies and uh we're going to talk a little bit about how he does that and what he does for companies and why uh you know entrepreneurs go to him for uh this advice and and uh this guidance and support and you know if you're an entrepreneur you know having someone like this in your pocket really brings lots and lots of of a gift so uh with that mark i'm so proud to have you on the show welcome to the show brother yeah thank you thank you for having me i'm super excited you know we um laid out i think a, a an excellent um outline of discussion here so can't wait to launch in you know launch into it you know entrepreneurs go through this whole thing you know they got great ideas ready to go i'm excited about my product i got this thing and they they, they start and they're sitting in the office and the phone's not ringing oh my god you know i've got this great product i haven't sold it now I'm, I'm, you know, I got bills to pay. I got these people I want to, I, I want to employ. I, look, I want to. This, this is the bright idea. So I'm, I'm, I need to go out there and find some customers. Yeah, you know, uh, it's the uh, if I build it, they will come. <laughs> That's what I call it. It's a field of dreams, right? Um, you know, it is so common, actually. And um, in my observation, I mean, we've all heard the statistics of startup failures and. Candidly, uh, you know, I, maybe they vary a little bit from kind of your traditional tech startups, you know, in Silicon Valley to the corner restaurant. But but I think it's kind of similar. You know, it's like tech startup fails at kind of the same rate as the corner restaurant. You know, maybe the corner restaurant even has a has longer life expectancy. Here's what's interesting is um, I don't work with restaurants so much, but but I do work with uh, uh, tech startups, uh, you know, many, many, many years. It's you know where I focus my career. My observation is, is that today many startups fail not because the product didn't work, the technology didn't work. You know, yes, that happens. You know, uh, absolutely. There's the moonshot. You know, they raise some money. They have this great idea and they can just never quite get it to work. Well, obviously you're not going to have a business, right? But that actually is really few and far between. Most of the time failure is because the entrepreneur, the founder, you know, the, the, the executive team did not put the same care into engineering the market and their go to market and their marketing as they did the product. So they spent, you know, 18 months, two years, three years, how long, you know, however long it takes them, you know, to get that incredible invention out the door, they get it built. And then three weeks, <laughs> three months, <laughs> maybe at best six months before launch, somebody says, well, Hey, how are we going to market this? How are we going to sell this? You know, and that's where the failure happens. So I come in and help founders that might find themselves in that situation and they're scrambling. So you get that 911 call. You you, you know you you're, yeah, you're the one they go to. A, right? 911, I got this yeah. problem. We're not making I, I you know I got to pay people and yeah, I got this idea. Right. I'm ready to go to marketplace. I want to serve my customers, but how do I get mm -hmm. to my customers, Mark? Right? I mean, why why isn't the phone ringing? Why why do I not have sales, Mark? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of times it, and this sounds simple and it really is, but it, it, um, it's a failure of really understanding who that customer is, who that buyer is. And then there's even one extra level to that, that you could peel back and you could say, okay, even if I know who the buyer is, do I really understand what they're, you know, hiring my product to do? Now that's a reference uh, to jobs to be done, which is, you know, a real popular framework. And um, I think an excellent way to look at, you know, strategy and to look at, you know, how to solve this issue of how do I position? What do I see? say about my product. But the point is, is that it starts with knowing who the customer is and everybody is tempted to say, but we can sell to everybody and never. <laughs> and no. I don't really like no, making you defensive statements, but 
but yeah, yeah you're an idiot but uh, that's it they're an idiot yeah an idiot. but how many times yeah. how many times have you heard that oh God, but you know you're, you know you're broke what? we <laughs> so they're so, broke yeah. they're, they're broke and making bad decisions i mean yes this is the, yes this is that's the key to bad, bad entrepreneurship you're you're yeah, broke yeah. you become desperate you start yeah. you go yeah. for the hail mary customers yeah. you then you you know and, and that's something that people don't understand is that you know go back to that you need to engineer engineer the market and and i and i really love the word engineering and i do work with primarily technical founders so you know they think in terms of it they're often engineers themselves but engineering has intent right when you engineer a solution you're not just sort of throwing ideas out there <laughs> You know, you're not, you know, it's not like, whoa, we're, we're going to do this, that, and the other. And, you know, I'm not sure exactly how we're going to do it, but that's what we're going to do. Like, no, engineering, there's intent. There's very specific plan. There's, you know, and sure, you know, there might be a few things in there that we're going to have to figure out along the way, right? But, you know, you don't just build a bridge by just starting to stack bricks, <laughs> you know, like you, like you engineer it, you know, you're out sure. there measuring, you're, you know, so there's a process to it. So you engineer, what does it mean to engineer the marketplace? So let's, let's go through that. Yeah. So you, so, so like, where do you start? What's, what's the idea? What's the, yeah. what's the path of engineering a, a marketplace? Yeah, it's a great question. So, so how do you do it? You know, is really what you're asking. Uh, okay, yeah. great, Mark. So how do you do that? Well, um, the, the, the first thing is, uh, you, you need to back up and you need to clearly define and have a very, very clear reference to what is the problem that my product is um, either uniquely able to solve, you know, in other words, you know, there aren't really too many or maybe any other solutions in the market and I have one, or maybe there's a lot of other solutions, but you know, we have a special uh, insight or ability, or maybe I'm able to solve the problem you know, 3x faster, 2x cheaper, you know, there, there's some angle right so what we need to do is we need to first of all get very very clear on the problem and then uh, come up with a very short um description or explanation of how we do it okay so it, it starts there and and if you try and shortcut that then your messages that you put into the market are going to just be all comparison and I like to yeah, say, right. so, that, get, right. so, go, so give me that way. Hold on. Let's give me that. I don't want to rush over that. Cause I feel like yep. if I rush over that. Our, our audience will get it. So, so yeah. just start, kind of give me that in, in smaller bites. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so, so you have built a product, right? Yep. So you built this product now, obviously, you know, from day one, what the app, what it does, right? And so it does a certain set of things and, you know, and it's very clear, like, okay, someone would use that product and, you know, those functions to achieve, you know, you know, these tasks, you know, all right. So let me, let, me, do let, me use a, let me use an example. So, uh, CDO group, we're a construction company and a construction management firm. So we have yep. two essential tasks. We do it. One, we are a general contractor and two, we're a program manager. So these yep. are our tasks, right? So this is us as a yep. company. And these yep. are the things it might be, you're a catering company. You might be that you're a, a, yep. a, a software company. So this, this is the task that my product handles. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And, and, and so you, but, but you, you have to though, go deeper than just the, you know, the, the tasks, like what okay. is the problem? So for example, um, your customer, they could also build a construction management function. That's right. right? That's right. That's right. You know, so, so why should they hire you? Right, right. So, well, so it, it, well, so this is we're getting clear on that, though. So, so, you, so you want to get super clear on that. So, it could be that in your particular, and you know, I don't know anything about construction, so you'll have to, you know, complete some of these sentences for me. But yep. it could be that if I'm building airports, you know, I just randomly picked that, you know, that that um, okay, yes, there, you know, it's a huge project, I can imagine, and and there's going to be a team, but but there's but there's a need for some trusted partners because either you need more project managers than what you can possibly hire, you know? So that could be it. You know, I'm just making stuff up on the fly. Yeah, okay, got but it. the yeah, point so is, 
Yeah. The point is, is that is that you have to get crystal clear on what is the problem that 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 your core market, your core audience, the customer you you know the ideal customer profile, right? ICP. What's that problem? And then you um, you you put the messaging, you develop messaging about how you solve that problem. So you don't go out there and say, "Hey, we're a construction management company. We work with you know projects from you know from you know three million to, uh, you know, um, a hundred million in budget and in this region of the, you know, and Hey, hire us. We're great. We've got, you know, 55 people on staff or whatever it is. Instead, what you do is you go out there and you say, you know what? We understand, not just we understand the unique challenges of building airports. Okay, everybody's going to say that, right? All your competitors, but we understand that what you need is and then you fill in the blank and you describe so that somebody who is your ICP is going to go, wow, these people know my business. Number one, they know me. If they know me, th maybe they can actually help me. And then you begin to build a, 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 you know, a, a go to market engine, a marketing engine, your sales team aligns to this. And now you're walking into discussions with something more than just, oh, we're 35 years old. We have this, we have that, we have this number of people. We work in these States. We work, you know, we've done these projects, you know, Hey, we're, you know, we're really good guys, you know? And, and so that is the first thing thing when it gets to engineering, when we talk about engineering is to get to that level of specificity. Now people listening right now go, well, of course that's obvious. And yet I just encourage, go look at your website <laughs> and, you know, and try and remove all bias and everything and say, if I didn't know who we were and I went to our website, would, would any of this come through? Or would it be, you know, we're this old, we have this many offices, we have this many people We're, you know, we're here, we're there, we're, you know, and are you and, so, 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 so when we're doing this, we're, we want to make sure our website messaging and our, our marketing messaging are all yeah. issues, the same thing. So get to understand the customer, understand, you know, I guess we always call it selling to their pain. You know, what is it your customer needs? Yeah. What's the solution sure. you're solving for that sure. person? Right. I mean, like for sure. us. Hey, we need projects turned over on time, on budget. We have flexibility in our development schedule. You're the solution that can be flexible. It's 10 projects today, 100 projects tomorrow. You've got, you know, we've done thousands and thousands. We understand how to do their level projects at their speed yeah. and ultimately what their companies are looking for. So once we get to understand the customer, is what you're saying? Yep. Get, get, yep. Now make sure that we're selling to their need. Yes. Yes, because because, you know, um, for example, I I'm just assuming that there could be other types of projects. You know, there could be some types of construction projects. Again, it's just an assumption. I have no idea. You might. No, say, no, no. Oh, we're we're, we're very particular. Like like we have one kind of for us. And I, but my guess is that's the thing we, we've we've boiled down to. We can't say yes. We, we in fact. We say no to more people than we say yes to. You know, sure, a guy just got, sure. you know, grabbed me and, and, uh, at lunch. He's like, hey, can you come remodel my kitchen? I'm like, no, we don't do that. We, we do not. a <laughs> very particular type <laughs> yeah. of project, right? We do construction, yeah. you know, commercial construction rollout. You yeah. know, people that are doing yeah. 50 or more projects a year. Uh, we, yeah. you know, in, in this range price-wise and these marketplaces. Yeah. You know, we have a very particular customer yeah. profile yeah. that fits our systems well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so absolutely. And I'm going to assume that everyone listening in their businesses, um, you know, they also have a customer profile, um, you know, that fits, you know, whatever it is that they do, you know, they're bringing to market the value that they bring to market. And yet my point is, is that if, if we all look at our collective, you know, our websites and our online, um, uh, marketing materials, which might, might be through LinkedIn or other social platforms or, you know, email newsletters, whatever, you know, billboards, you know, uh, you know, depending on the business you're in, um, odds are good that it, that, that the messaging is high level and basically says, Hey, we're better, faster, cheaper. And yeah. guess what? Because everybody in the market is saying that the consumer, um, our target, our target customer client is scratching their head going, how do I make a decision? Like, help me buy, you know, this is what I mean about the engineering, but it requires this, this, this rigorous, you know, um, analysis or almost like an audit, you know, and believe me, it's a little sobering. 
because well, um, but, but, you know, but, 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 but here. some of it you're going to say, yeah, that that's way off point. Oh, but we love it. Well, but it's not serving us well. So, so how do you get, so you're, you're look, the website stuff is, you know, I, I feel like a cat chasing a laser pointer. Like literally, literally I, I, over here, over here, every day I'm, I'm, I'm in flux. I'm at, literally as, as a founder of companies, I get hit over the head all day long with yeah. somebody walking in my office and telling me, this is, if you do this, this is your, you know, it's, it's, it's about the same level of crap I get about health. If this week's health thing is to do this and next week, health, it's the same thing in, in marketing with me. I, I, I listen, I love marketing. I got brand awareness. We have great brand awareness, but it, it's, it does feel a little bit like I'm spinning in the wind. Yeah. Right. So, so how, how do we, we, we like in, in, in today's world, I mean, I've spent millions of dollars. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying yeah. millions of yeah. dollars yeah. In, 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 on social media. And well, let's talk about, about okay, uh, okay. So let's talk about let's talk about where your buyers are. Yeah. So 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 strip away any thought about you, you know like like marketing campaigns to reach them. Just you know, and you tell me. So we're going to do a little consulting session here. Where yeah. are your buyers? Like like if like if you're going to fly, you know, is there one place that you could fly two times a year? And you're like, you know what, fifty percent of the guys and the the men and women I want to sell to are going to be there. Or is there, you know, like so? I'm asking you a question. Like where? Yeah, are I, your I got to tell you. So so there are some conventions that are old school, and and the old buyers are going there. Today's buyers are changing, right? Their bosses aren't letting them go to shows. They're not letting them go. Yeah. To these events that's so a true lot of, of them, all industries by the way just, yeah yeah they stripped away a lot of the yeah. hey let's go to this you know you know so for yeah, us yeah. in the construction yeah. retail world it was always you know a couple of, there's maybe four or five really big conventions and mm -hmm. i could count on you know seeing those folks there we would you know make yeah. a big deal out of it wine and dine them you know set up you know yeah. we'd set up yeah uh, every convention our goal is to have at least 30 great meetings set up before yeah. we get there yeah right and Absolutely. then and then when we're there we're we're, we're doing those 30 plus whatever we farm fish while yeah. we're there Right. And yeah. then the follow up is really the key to us, really making sure that on the backside, we have this follow up thing. So, marketing in front uh, to get to know where they're there. Like, yeah. I, my, I hate it when our people go to a convention or a show and they fish. They just walk, you know, I, I call it fishing, sit out there with a bobber waiting yeah. <laughs> for a fish to come bite the line. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. you know what they're going to do? They're going to get drunk. They're going to go yeah. party and play golf. And then no yeah. one's going to get any work done. And then they're, 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 your chance where all the buyers are at. You're walking around, not having, you know, you have no appointment, so they don't want to see you. So now yeah, you're trying to get yeah. time with them and you've wasted this opportunity. Yeah. 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 So uh, the reason why I ask where they are is that there can be, you know, physical locations, which um, I'm not surprised at all. I can imagine, you know, believe me, conventions, trade shows, conferences still have a place. Um, oh, you know, God. there's a lot of discussion in, in marketing channels, you know, are events relevant? Should we still go to trade shows? For the most part, the answer is yes. Now, it doesn't mean you take the biggest booth. It doesn't mean you, you even have to take a booth you know, um, but you need to be there. So there's a physical location, but there's the digital location as well. And I, and I'm going to get to your comment about you've spent a lot of money on social and you know, it's maybe questionable. What have I gotten out of that? So one of the problems with the digital, so the physical platforms, it sounds like you got that wired, like, Hey, you set up, you go in with meetings, you know, you, you, you keep your sales team to a very tight rein, you know, look, you're not just there to, you know, kind of hang out and hope, hope somebody walks by. Like, like you are there, you're hunting, you have meetings, you're, you know, like there's a schedule. Okay, great. Um, and you know, there's sometimes more you can do around that, but, but let's set the, you know, the physical events aside online is where it can feel really like, you know, water just kind of flowing through your hands, you know, like, like what, like, what am I getting here? And here's, here's one of the possible reasons why that is, is because digital billboards, just digital billboards saying, set a meeting with us. We're great. Don't work. Okay. But let me tell you, Google, even LinkedIn, a lot of the you know, automation, marketing automation tools do a phenomenal job of, of, of giving you um, the idea that this is how modern marketing works. Hey, don't buy a billboard aside the road, you know, buy it, you know, where you can reach everybody in the universe on the internet does not work. So what does work? So here's what works. 
take your podcast, which you've got, take your podcast and start inviting on senior executives from your customers, but don't have them, do not have them talk about you. No, no, it is not. It, it, and first of all, you know, some won't even be comfortable doing that, you know, and be like, oh, okay, you know, but have them come on and start building the number one podcast for the construction industry, commercial construction industry, build the number one. Okay. Now it doesn't mean, you know, maybe guys like me don't pop on from time to time. I'm not saying it's only, but make it, I mean, double, triple down, but bring your customers on, give them a platform. And then here's what you do. You use that to begin to expand and build a community. And the community starts out as a LinkedIn group. Now, this is a play that I executed very, very well in the video technology space. And it even led to a company IPOing, um, led to some, some, some really, really, really fabulous outcomes. Um, but you begin to build a community. And here's the purpose of the community. This is the best analogy I found for it. It's like, it's like if you've got kind of a cool house, um, but you have a famous friend you know, who hangs out with, you know, movie stars, rock stars, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I want to be the host of the party. Why? Because I'm, nobody knows me. I'm like, I'm not famous, but I got a little bit of a cool house. Maybe i just go with the analogy, you know, and everybody wants to meet the host of the party. So guess who basically gets introduced to every single person in the room by doing nothing more than just hanging out in the corner, smiling, having conversations. Hey, you come, Hey, thanks for coming. Hey, I don't have to go work the room because guess what? At some point throughout the night, everybody who comes through is going to want to meet the host. Hey, who's this house is cool. Hey, this is a cool party. Who, man, it's a great crowd who, you know, Oh, Hey, go, go meet Mark. You know, here, 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 he's over here. Here, come, come, you know, that's, and so what you want to do is you want to be the host of the party. If you're the host of the party now, just naturally conversations begin to ensue, you know? Oh, Hey. And all of a sudden you find yourself in conversations that maybe it would have been really hard to set up, you know, if you're trying to force it and they just happen. Why? Because when you're adding value to the industry, to the market, to the ecosystem, at some point people say, Maybe I need to talk to these guys about my project, you know, and this is how modern marketing works. And you know what I just described costs zero in ad dollars, but there is an investment, but this is not buying LinkedIn ads and it certainly is not buying Facebook ads. So if the strategy is, you know, Hey, we're going to, you know, we're going to invest money and we're going to get a bunch of signups and we're going to, yeah, I'm not. It doesn't necessarily mean you stop doing it, but you certainly probably don't do it at the same level. Instead, what you do is you buy ads that promote content that then open up a conversation window for somebody to say, wow, I, I need to listen to more of that podcast. That was, there was a ton of value that dropped there. And then in time, your phone's going to ring and it is, it, it, it sounds soft. It sounds like, okay, you know, that's kind of all true. Okay, great. Another one of those marketing things like, just trust me, it's going to work. This is how buyers make decisions today. They're I don't, to I, Mark, I, They're I hear you say that. I, I hear so. you say that, but I, I'm the guy in the seat who's, who's got, you know, nine companies and I have spent, yeah. I, I, here, I've heard, I, I've, I, I get this, you know, don't worry, just keep building. So keep you don't like your marketing. <laughs> <laughs> I no, I love it. No, 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 no. What I think is, but here, truth is, I think most salespeople are pussies. They don't want to get on the goddamn phone and just call then people. You got, then you got the wrong salespeople. No, I, I, I agree with here's you. the problem. I, most salespeople I are agree pussies. with you, by they, the way. They, just, they, they want to get on the phone and have the phone. They want the internet to do the work. They have to pick up yeah, the yeah, damn phone yeah, and yeah, call the guy, yeah, call yeah, the lady, yeah. call the customer. But we're talking. And, yeah, but they, they, it, they, they, they want the internet to do the work for them. People have gotten lazy. Stop being lazy. Get the phone. Yeah. Call them. Yeah. Build a relationship. That. But that, now that we're talking about crap. a sales. Now we're talking yeah. about a sales challenge, though. I was not. Yeah, I was not they're, saying they're marketing, that the podcast is going to drive. Send them something. Yeah. Send them something. Yeah. You want to be marketing? 
Send them a brochure to ask them for a meeting to call nah, them. Nobody, no, n- n- no, n- nobody's going to, they, they, they're going to open the envelope. They're going to throw it on their desk and never look at it again. Some guy just and, walked in my office. Some guy just walked in my office for insurance and brought me yeah. a basket with a book in it. And yeah, he, I mean, okay. he called me every That's single cool. day. And he, and he, and he and look, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I don't even know who the company is, but like, it's been sitting on my desk and I'm like, I got I, 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 I like, I don't even know what they sell. But I feel like I got to call a guy, right? That's so right. Probably, That's I, right. I, I'm guessing ten bucks, maybe twenty bucks on a on a on this little yeah. basket. And yeah, yeah. you know, he walked and in my office. And- that's creative. That's creative. But but the, but the problem is, is that so that works in like a local context. But how you know? Uh, and, and again, look here's here's the problem with this discussion is is that we have to start by. Um, clearly defining you know what's the market you're in where you know where do you sell to where are your buyers and and so what i'm describing is a you know is more of a is more of a technology maybe more of an online more of a you know if you're like look mark you know um i do projects in phoenix you know maybe occasionally i go to tucson you know all right it's a totally different it's a different strategy right but interestingly enough you could still build a community you're just going to do it face to face maybe you're going to do a monthly meetup maybe you're going to you know and maybe you use the podcast maybe you still podcast and you kind of go with that strategy because that serves to reinforce the fact that that you know you guys are innovative you know so but it but it depends i work exclusively with tech funded technology startups these are people doing you know like like a minimum annual license deal is is a million bucks you know, yeah. and, and, but, and, but there's there's deep really you. and so it's exactly, but what we're talking but, about, but, but, here, but, but hold think, on. There, there, no one's buying a million dollar deal on a Facebook ad, but I mean, here, no one's buying, no, they don't no, give a shit about yeah, your you're Facebook, right. Your Instagram, they, they, here, they don't give a shit anything about the social, they're buying a million dollars on, you're talking to the CIO and going, Hey, look, here's how we're making your people more productive. You guys, you know, as a company, you want to expand yeah. and do 600 units. You, no one can find information. So you're selling <laughs> to a high level. So somebody's reaching out and creating that. Now, what, 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 what here, this is where it's confusing. And look, I, I don't, I don't know if you believe in the same thing, but I, I, I keep getting all these salespeople that want to stop they, they they think that's um, they they confuse marketing with with this with online marketing. Now uh, marketing's great. Look, we we have to get brand awareness, brand identity, creating the image, calling someone up and saying, "Hey, here's what we do," right? And then turning that into a sales process, right? It, it, that there's there's value there. So, you know, someone who's calling that CIO, going, "Look, we've got the software. It's going to help you become a billion dollar organization, right? Here's the companies we've done it for. And this is why they love it. Here's yeah. proof in the pudding. Here's a marketing strategy we put together that show McDonald's does it, uh, IBM does it, uh, ABC does it, and here's what they say about our our software. Now, yeah. that I get. The problem is that today's sales guys. They want you to throw some magic wand out there and go, well, they're, they're going to come to me. And yeah, I feel yeah. like that's not, that's not marketing. That's, well, that's just laziness. Well, you know, I, I, I can't, I can't help that. I mean, if, if, if a founder can't build a sales team, there is no marketing that's going to help it. You know, yeah, so just, how, just how do we help those sales guys? Super frank. Yeah. Um, well, uh, <laughs> They, they, they need to read some of these books. They need to become students again. I, I mean, like, look, my, um, my, I started as a seller, you know, I may, in fact, I often, you know, kind of make the comment, I'm a revenue first marketer, revenue first marketing leader. Now I will make another observation. There are way too many marketers and marketing leaders who forget that their job is to ring the dang cash register. You Bam. Know? Bam. Um, so, so I, so, I mean, this conversation is on both sides, you know, right, I would actually right. give the observation and, and, and just to, you know, kind of pull on this thread, you know, a little bit more, um, it, you know, there's, you know, there's a lot of in marketing circles, you know, there's a lot of talk about how the CMO chair is like revolving every 18 months, you know, it's like CMO is getting fired and new one comes in. And yet 
What does almost every CMO do in their very first day on, on the job or their first three, three, three months, six months? Oh, we need a branding exercise. The logo first thing sucks. right out of there. We need a branding the website. Yeah. Oh, we've got a, you know, like, like, you know, uh, we need new t-shirts. Oh, the trade show, like uh, this swag, this stinks. Like nobody wants this. That is not what, and as, as much as it is creative, the insurance guy, and, you know, brings a gift basket in and for local insurance and all that, Hey, you know what? It, it, that probably makes sense. Um, but there's still technology companies who are, who will pay you. They'll give you a hundred dollar Amazon gift card to just watch a demo. Right. Zero intent. That's yeah, right. I mean, literally, I mean, like, you know, if you were bored and just wanted to collect Amazon gift cards, like you, you probably could make a couple grand a month just sitting on, you know, just, hey, I'll take your 30 minute meeting. <laughs> By the way, here's my email address, send the Amazon card to, you know, and you've got them on mute. You're not even paying attention. You're doing email you know, while they're doing their thing. I mean, it's ridiculous. And yet this is a play that too many marketing teams are executing. So there's a failure on both sides. I would argue your observation on sales is absolutely correct. I've seen that, but I'd argue that on the marketing side, it's, it's true too. How do you solve that? Well, you know, number one, you, you know, you, it starts with the leader, right? So, um, you, you know, if there's a sales team that's not, that's not executing and isn't out hunting and believes that everything should just come to them and everything should be pre-screened and teed up and ready to go, like, um, fundamentally, you know, um, need a new market, a new sales head, <laughs> you know? And then on the flip side, you know, if marketing is all about branding and pretty pictures and buying Facebook ads, you need a new marketing strategy and a new marketing head because, you know, maybe you still do those things. You know, I, I, I want to be clear. It's not that, oh, running Facebook ads, no, you should never do that. But if that's the primary strategy, um, it, in a lot of cases it's failed, you know? Yeah, I, I think you're right on there. If we can get that that piece where, you know, we have a sales team that will do, you know, the marketing really, you know, the looking for the easier, softer way makes me bananas with salespeople, right? That somehow or another you can give up the work. That some, yeah, and maybe maybe someday in the future there is some technology that can take some of the heavy lifting out of the picking up the phone, calling your customer, looking for, knowing the marketplace, who are the buyers, you know, that part you, you started yeah, with is yeah. who, yeah. who are their buyer, who the buyer is, yeah. where is that buyer and how do I get a hold of them? Yeah. yeah right? I, right. You, you started with that idea and I think that's, that's right on the, this, this, uh, you know, what we're noticing is that today marketing people think is this, you know, going out and yelling at the world that, you know, putting the billboards up and putting the Facebook ads out yeah. and yeah. they're trying to market to a hundred percent of the people. Yeah. And there's only, yeah. you know, a 0.3% that want your service Yeah, and you're wasting yeah. your time. You're spitting in the wind and you think that, Oh, I'm making, I'm spending all this money doing all this stuff. I must be doing something. You're like, no, you're, you're bullshitting yourself. Yeah. Take that same money yeah. and, uh, you know, have people, you know, uh, spend time. But this is the engineering that yeah. this gets yeah, yeah, that's right. That's back right. That's to right. my main point is that's that right. if you're engineering the then, then, you know, you know, there's also, you know, one way to tell if a marketing leader or a marketing team is engineering their efforts versus just, you know, kind of like, well, well, we're kind of smattering across everything, you know, it's kind of, you know, almost random one way to tell the simplest way to tell is to say, Hey, so, um, you, you know, you, you, you can say, Hey Mark, Hey, got a question. So, you know, I, I approve the budget. We're spending 10 grand a month on Facebook ads. Tell me, um, I, I, it's not, what are we getting for the 10 grand, but why are we doing it? You ask the why question. Now marketers are used to answering the, what do we get for it? If you, if you, if you ask the, what do we get for the 10 grand? They're going to go, Oh, Oh, well, you, you know, last month we had this many visits to our website and this many people filled out a form and we provided this many qualified leads to sales. And, and, you know, we believe that 50% of those came as a result. The traffic came as a result of, you know, Facebook. So, you know, um, it's like $200 per lead, but that's actually pretty good. Our industry average is $500 and you as a CEO or founder are kind of going, oh, Okay. Okay. I guess that makes sense. I, I don't really necessarily have a way to like fact check, but all right. And so then they keep doing it and it's a totally failed strategy. Yeah, Instead, yeah, right. what That's you right. want to do is you want to say, you want to say not what do we get for it, but why? 
So you say, hey, Mark, you know, fine. I'm, I'm not even challenging the 10,000. It's in the budget. We already discussed it. But why are we doing it? Can, can you explain to me why? And you will be shocked at how they'll, they'll get stumped. <laughs> yeah, like, well, well, I, I, I mean, uh, well, of course, everybody's on Facebook and, and, you know, and you're kind of going, you mean that's your best, <laughs> like everybody's on Facebook? <laughs> like, why? Like, and then you probe. And if you're not getting crisp, clear, thought out answers, now you may disagree with them. That's okay. Then you can have a debate and a discussion, you know, but if it's kind of like, well, everybody's on Facebook and, you know, and, and, and this is a part of the playbook and, uh, and our competitors are all doing it. And yeah, but like, that's the horse like, shit that everybody tells me do, do what they stop with here. here. Stop, most marketing, but most, yeah, yeah. M- most marketing people are you know, stop with the stop listening. You are not everybody. And everybody yeah. doesn't, most yeah. people don't know their ass yeah. from a hold of ground, but here, m- most people that are asking you to tell you this advice have never run a business. I've never paid yeah. for marketing. They're, they're, they're listening to some crap that yeah. they, they don't know. And I'm, 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 I'm looking at going, you got to go back to where you're talking about. Where yeah. are your customers? So the men and women that, that buy your services, right? Where are they at? And yeah. how do you communicate yeah. to that person? Where, yeah. What yeah. shows, what phone numbers, what email yeah. addresses. Now, what do I send them? Do, am I sending them? You know, there's a guy, uh, his name is Al Taff. Al Taff has been sending me an email every Friday for 20 years. I, I get it right, right here. I'll, I'll be getting it any time now. It's, it usually come right around <laughs> yeah. 3 o'clock. Clock work. <laughs> I, 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 I met Al once. I went, met, met, met Al at a, at a convention in Vegas. And I'm like, you're the guy who's been sending me an email. Every Friday, it's, it's got two <laughs> cartoons on it. It's got a little market analysis about what's going on with the marketplace on the real yeah. estate construction world. And yeah. it's this small little thing, but he's consistent. He sends it out every, yeah. every, every, yeah. every single week around three o'clock on Fridays. And, you know, it's, it's, there's something about consistency there, yeah. right? So you kind yeah. of know yeah. who he is yeah. and what he does and his messaging yeah. is the same. So there might be some value in. And a, you said. Yeah. It's sorry for cutting you off, but, it, but I, but there's an, a very important point that you made that, that, that I think is totally, it will get lost. So that's why I'm cutting you off. You even know roughly three o'clock on a Friday. And I am guessing that, and you know, his name, you met him at some point, maybe it was just serendipitous random, or maybe, <laughs> you know, he requested me, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, but the point is, is that I, I, I'm assuming you don't open every single email. Right. No, I, I usually read the two cartoons. He's, okay. he's got two, he's got two cartoons at the top of it. So if I'm flipping okay. through it, right, he has got two. You know, they're like they're two silly cartoons. He that reminds yeah, me yeah, of yeah. The, yeah. yeah when I when I was a, yeah. uh, when I was but, a kid. But but here's the point. Here's the point to be made though. Is that okay? Maybe you do open every single one because kind of you kind of know the format, whatever. But maybe you read one a little more in depth because you have time that week. Maybe another one you just kind of open on your phone, you know, and you close it, you swipe on. The point is you're not like consuming every single email. But what sure. happens? It's that consistent. You remember his name. You you at least based on what you're telling me here, you have a generally positive feeling about this person yeah, and I don't yeah. I have no idea what his company does, you know, yeah. and whatever. But so so the moment that you have a need and 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 it fits, it, who who are you going to call? In fact, maybe you won't even call anyone else and unless he gives you some crazy price or you know or tell you know like like he kind of gets the business, right? And now, you know, that can't be his only tactic because he's been sending it to you for 20 years and presumably you haven't worked together yet. So he needs other methods, but you know what? If we have enough of these channels and if they're intelligent and if they intersect with where our buyer is, um that is a pretty good engine behind, you know, growing a business. And that business could be a, a, a consultant, you know, kind of a one person band. Um, it could be a, a you know, a, a company, uh, it could be a huge company, you know, it could be a vendor, it could be, you know, whatever, but, um, and that's the way modern, modern marketing works. All right. So as we start to look at crafting an effective go to market strategy, yeah. give me, you know, as we, as I start to, Ooh, let's go through the ABCs of crafting that go-to-market strategy. Yeah, so uh, l- let's first of all start by what is go-to-market. And go-to-market is more than just the sales process. 
um, it is a connection, really. It's sort of an end-to-end -end process. It starts with the product, um, you know, literally what the product does, because the product, let's, let's face it, you could execute some flawless, um, you know, marketing program. You could have literally the best sellers, the best sales team. I mean, everything, but it, you know, if your product stinks or if it doesn't, you know, fit a real need in the market, then, you know, obviously you're not going to be successful. So it start go to market really starts with a product, but I'm going to just make the assumption for sake of, you know, a focus here and time that, that we have a product that meets a real market need that, you know, that does what it should do. Right. So, so, but I have to make that point because, you know, there are situations I find myself in, you've probably observed it, you know, in your own market where, you, you, you know, you're like, you know, these guys are doing good marketing, but, you know, geez, you know, it'd be, you know, if their product actually worked, you know, or if their product, you know, was, was better. So, um, so you have to start with the product. So then when you're architecting this whole, this whole, um, uh, you know, go to market is, um, it, it, marketing and sales is now, uh, kind of a three strand cord, you know? Um, in other words, it, it, it's not, and it is three strand because you have product, you have marketing and you have, and, and you have, you know, the sales motion, you know, and the sales motion is literally, you know, do we have a model that is primarily inside sales driven? Do we have account executives who are beating the street? Is it a combination? Is it a marketing led, you know, with, with kind of a salesperson that comes in at the end? There's, there's different, there's different models out there and it depends on what we're doing. You know, in the case of a SaaS software business, um, it might be that there's really you know, only just a handful of account executives in the field. And it's pri primarily marketing led, what's called product led growth, you know, product led. And then there's kind of an inside sales team. And then there's a handful of execs, you know, going out and trying to win the, the biggest accounts, right. You know, they're, they're in the field. Um, but you, you have to define again, um, how does the market buy? How do they want to buy? Because some of this, too many companies I find, you know, they're like, well, we're going to hire a bunch of salespeople. Oh, okay, fine. But what if the market, you know, the way they want to buy, they prefer a different, you know, modality, a different approach. We, we should be aware of that. And it's just being aware of it. You know, yeah. now you, I, I gotta, you, you I know, this, like yeah. I, I love Tesla, by the way, Tesla is a great example. So, so they don't use car dealerships, right? totally, totally went around the paradigm. Now that was, this, they had to decide to do that. And guess what? That created a whole bunch of a, of cost and a, you know, now it had some benefits. And I, 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 bought, I bought my Tesla in a mall. Yeah. I, mean, I was in a mall. I was Precisely. in a shopping center. I was in a shopping Precisely. center. I'm in, I'm in Scottsdale and you go in the Scottsdale fashion square yeah. and there's uh, Tesla, uh, you know, yeah. and Lucid I, I is on the other side. You yeah, know, I, I bought it so, all. I, I, I thought to myself, yeah. and the first time I got in the car, the product was so damn good. I could not, not buy it. Right. And so the, the product, that's right. Was, that's right. But, but my yeah. point is, is that that's a go to market strategy and a decision. And that's a great example. And actually Tesla, I wasn't planning to make this example, but let's go with it because um, it's very famous that only recently have they really spent any money, any significant money on marketing. And Elon Musk was very clear, you know, in the early days, it's like, look, the car is the marketing, you know, like the car is so good. It creates intrigue. The neighbors all want to talk, you know, like, Hey, Hey, you bought a Tesla. Hey, how do you like it? You know, my brother has a Tesla, right? Let me tell you. And he bought it just like, I don't know, a year, year and a half ago. I mean, Tesla's been out for 11 years now, you know, or, or 12 years. Um, and you know, and the first thing he did on his way home, called me, you know, is describing, you know, telling me all great it is everything. I mean, to this day, like there's, million tens of millions of teslas on the road and you know your neighbor gets one and what do they do you know pull up come over hey you want to come see my tesla you know it's like that's, that's amazing you know, that's, that's right. so really so is. but but those were very clear engineered decisions it wasn't random it wasn't because you know elon musk had no idea what he was doing and and these people had no they made a very clear decision we wanted to go direct to the consumer we feel dealers you know will will 
will, um, you know, cut off kind of that direct connection that we want to have with our, with our consumer. And so we're, so we're not going to sell through dealerships. You know, we're going to build our own stores in marketing. We're going to do that by building the best dang product on the road, you know, in its category. And everybody's going to want to talk about it and everybody, you know, and, and, you know, you can say, well, that's word of mouth. Well, yes, of course that's word of mouth, but it, but it's, it's engineered it's intention by focusing on the product that's how you get people talking you know that's so awesome. yeah Listen, so I, I'm, I, love I'm, I'm, I, I, I love that example i love where you're at you know that's why you're the whisperer that's why you've got this you know this ability. that's a very you, interesting description by the way yeah, yeah well we got, <laughs> I, listen, I think i think you, you, well i think you've got this i think you've got this ability to to really help you know, uh, entrepreneurs create marketing plans that aren't just uh, fluff and puff that they're, you know, you, you really got a way to help them you know, generate sales or re ultimately ge generate revenue that, uh, that, uh, that helps right. them be profitable, re profitable re revenue. And Mark, it is a yeah. pleasure to get to, to have you on here. If, uh, if folks want to get a hold of you and have you and your, or, you know, it, it, the other part I think that's great about your group is you guys create the plan, but you also not only create a plan, because a lot of us have plans. I mean, knowledge is great, yeah, that's right. but you actually, you guys help execute on the plan, right? right? You guys actually help the entrepreneur and the entrepreneurial company really, you know, execute. You bring a whole team of people that that's make right. the plan happen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, thank, thank you for pointing that out because, um, I observed, uh, if you go to my website, it's growth stage dot marketing. So just growth stage, all one word dot marketing. I'm sure the link will be in the show notes. Um, but you go to the website and you know, I position myself as a virtual CMO, which, which I am, uh, very much. So, uh, I come in, work with founders to solve the problems. We just spent the last, you know, 30, 40 minutes talking about, um, um, but what I observed was, uh, you know, we, we'd go through a process and, you know, the founder would say, wow, Mark, this is, this is fabulous. Now, what do I do with this? <laughs> you know, like, like my team's not capable of executing or I don't have a team or I only have a partial team or, you know, what do I do with it? So there was an execution gap that I just ran into over and over. And by the way, I'm, I'm saying startups small, medium businesses, it's the same gap, you know, that's, that's it's, right. um, and, and, and let me tell you, even larger businesses, I've, I've observed gaps. So it's not, you know, like, oh, well, I'm not a startup and it, no, you know what, um, to, you know, in marketing, um, and, and things are shifting so fast that in some cases you might have some very good people in marketing, they're very dedicated, they're very, but they just haven't maybe kept up. You know, and so that doesn't necessarily mean you have to replace them, but it does mean that, um, you know, they need a new playbook. They need to, you know, they, they need some guidance, maybe even some mentoring. So, uh, I built a team and, uh, you know, we can come in on the graphics, uh, come in and produce content, the writing, um, uh, social media and digital platforms experts in that. And it turns out that those are kind of the core things that most companies struggle with. So they sit here and say, Mark, I get it. We, we need to like leverage LinkedIn more, but like, I, you know, I'm just sort of like every once in a while writing a random post, like, I, you know, I don't even have somebody who can write the content. No problem. You know, we can come in. And the difference is, is that a lot of the kind of the marketing agencies will basically, you know, they're, they're basically selling posts, right. Or blog posts, or they're selling content, but they're not able to go into the depth of what's required in a B2B market. And that's where, you know, we found a unique niche and, you know, so I'm able to come in, provide guidance, the team, you know, then comes in behind me, uh, under my guidance and, um, you know, it works really well. So I love it. I love it. I love offer. what you do. You know, Mark, I, I, I'm going to put all that contact, uh, context down below. I will make sure people and folks, if you could, let's, let's, let's have a conversation about what are you doing to, where are your customers? Who is your customer? Where are they? Talk to me about your customer. Yeah. How did you identify who that customer is? And, and how do you get to your customer? Give me some tactics and techniques that you use to get to your customer in whatever industry you're in. If, if it's a restaurant yeah, yeah. or if it's a railroad, I don't care what it is. How do you get to your customer and how do you communicate with that person and uh, have them get access to you? So let's start that as a discussion. Yeah. You know, uh, Mark, I am grateful for all of the wisdom you bring to the world, and I'm grateful for you being on this podcast today. Thanks for uh, all, all your great, uh, your great wisdom. 
Thanks for having me. Really appreciated it. And it was a very exciting, engaging, yeah. a little bit of fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, I love so. it. Yeah, I, <laughs> I love, love that. I love that. I feel like we had a, it was something people can really think about and get onto yeah. that, uh, get, get onto that, Mark. So I, I think it's great. Uh, folks, if, if you get a second, please take a, take a minute and, and go to Mark's website. We'll put the links down below. And as always, we're so grateful for you listening. Thanks for being here.